So now we want to start sending over the login credentials to our backend so then we can start the authentication process. So as you can see here, we're doing some client side validation on our, our front end form, but that's not enough to make sure that people won't spam us because the thing is, um, you can never trust the client. I mean, the front end code is easily accessible to them. And not only that, but they can find our API endpoint and start spamming it and potentially start spamming our database. And we want to do our best job to prevent any of that from happening. So one thing we're going to do just to get this started is start actually sending over this data to our backend. And then we're going to do some server side validation before we start authenticating them or anything like that. So Let's go into our sign up and login components here and let's actually start uh, doing a fetch request and sending this over to our server. So I'm just going to create a variable called vows and it's just going to be equal to value. So then we could reset our form and then I'm just going to do a fetch request to HTTP localhost 4000, which is where our server is hosted. And then the second parameter of the fetch request is an object and here we can configure our request. So we want to specify here that the method of a request is a post request. Then we want to specify that we want to, oops, we want to specify that we're going to include any credentials. So any, any cookies, it will be included in this request. And we want to specify the headers as well. So the reason we want to do this is because we want to tell our backend that we're sending over um, JSON data so that the server could parse this data correctly. So here in the headers, we specify a header called content type, and this will be set to application slash JSON. And that's just a uh, standard to send over JSON data. And then the body of our request will contain a JSON stringified and the values of our form. So real quick, we just want to do some um, proper error handling. So if we get an error, um, we just want to return and we do dot then and then this is our response. So if there's no response or the response is not okay or the response dot status code. So the status code that our server responded with is more than 400 is equal to or greater than 400. And that basically means something went wrong we want to uh, return from here. And if that's not the case, we can return response uh, dot JSON and then dot then. Now we have our data. And once again, if there's no data, we return. And once we get here, that means everything went fine. So for now, we're just gonna console log that data and we can just uh, copy paste this over to our login component. And the only difference here is we're going to specify here the path of this request is going to be to slash auth slash login. And when they're signing up, it's going to be sent over to slash auth slash register. So now that we're sending over the data to our backend, we can go over here to our index.js. And the first thing we need to do is make sure that our server is able to receive requests from other domains. And by default, it is not. So to do that, we're going to install cores to, to enable that uh, cross origin resource sharing and yup, which will help us do server side validation on our form data. So let's go ahead and install that. And I'm just going to run the server. And so first thing you want to do here is import cores like so. And then we want to run app.use. And I mentioned middleware in the last video. Basically, middleware is anything that runs in between the beginning and the end of the request response cycle. So when you do app.use, you're saying my express has, my express app, sorry, my express app is going to use the middleware inside of this function, um, that the dot use method. And here you pass in the middleware. So we're going to use the cores middleware. And the cores middleware is a function takes and it takes in an object and it lets you configure it. So we only want the origin of our front end to be able to communicate with us. And if you don't specify an origin, it's just going to assume you want everyone to be able to communicate with your back end. And that's not what we want. So let's specify our front end, which is located at localhost 3000. 
and credentials is true so uh, cross-site cookies will be sent and communicated with so once we got that done we want to basically make it so any request that goes to slash auth will be sent over to um, a router which we're going to make over here so let's make a folder called routers and a file called auth router.js and this is basically like a router that express provides for us so first thing you want to do is import express not that express and then we want to instantiate um, an instance of the router so we run um, express.router with capital R and then we do module.exports equals router so that means the export of this pack of this file will be the router so then we can import it over here in our index.js so we do uh, auth routers equal to require and we go to that file that we just made like that and then over here we're going to set up a middleware so we do app.use and the good thing about this um, express middleware is that also takes an optional argument which is a string and here you can specify a path so in this case it will be slash auth that basically means any request that is sent to um, the root slash auth of this server then we're going to want to run this middleware in that case and the middleware will be our auth router so that basically means um, express is going to pass to our router the request and response objects that we need so over here we can start making our routes so we do router.post and we're going to first do the login route so if they go to slash auth right and then over here slash log slash login it's going to run this callback and the callback receives the request and response objects that express passes through and then we can uh, mess around with that so first of all since here in the request.body we have the form data we want to validate that data so let's import yup over here and then we want to create a schema and a schema is basically like the shape of um, the shape of the restrictions of the data so what restrictions do you want in the data and you shape it into an object and that's what needs to be um, basically when you validate it it needs to match that shape or else um, it will return an error and that's what we're trying to do so you do here uh, go here and let's do form schema is equal to yup dot object and then you pass it in an object and this will be the shape of our object so it's going to have a username and we'll do yup dot string and then that username is going to be a required field and in, if it was not sent we want to return the error message and yup lets us do that so if this constraint was not matched um, this error message will be returned so it will be uh, username required and then it has to be a minimum of six characters and the error message here can be username too short and then it's a max length of 28 characters and here we can return username too long and we're going to do something very similar for our password so the shape of our object it's going to have a username a password with these restrictions on those fields so we just want to change the error message on um, these uh, strings right here to say password instead of username like so and now we can simply go here and let's make a variable called form data see and it's basically equal to sorry form data is equal to request dot body and then we do form form schema dot validate and we pass in our form data and then it returns a promise so we can do a dot catch and if there is an error we just want to print out error dot errors so the error that yup returns is an object that contains the dot errors field and dot errors is an array of all the errors that uh, we encountered when we validated this data 
and then we do dot then and that would be valid so when it resolves the promise it runs dot then and it passes in this valid parameter which basically is a boolean so it's either true or false so we do if valid and we just um, if the data was valid we just want to console log form is good and what's okay let me make sure okay I put curly brackets there so all right so now we're validating this and what's going on here okay I think I misspelled something here I'm not sure but now it's working I think I uh, misspelled this import okay so now um, when the user sends over this data to the slash auth slash login it's gonna go through this validation and we're either gonna it's either gonna print out the errors or form is good so this try sending over a good form so it meets it meets the requirements here you can see it prints out form is good now let's go over in postman and let's say someone wants to spam our server and they're gonna test it out by say sending over an empty username and an empty password here you say password required but as you can see it's, it just stays loading because there's no response so we want to make sure that we respond with an error code so we can go in here and do response.status and we want to send over the error code 422 and that basically means that the data or the entity could not be processed and we want to send that over like so okay so now when we send over this uh, invalid data we get this error code right here, improcessable entity, which is uh, matches our situation now. And let's say we entered a valid username, but no password. As you can see here, it printed out the error message password required. And if we, if we filled sent over a password, but no username, it says username required. If we sent over a username that's too short, username too short so yeah this is a server-side form validation for you um, I'm literally just gonna do the same thing over here but for our sign up path and as you can see here um, we're not really following best practices because we're copy and pasting code and that's really not necessary and I mean just look how messy this is so let's refactor this so it um, follows best practices so let's create a folder here called controllers and in this folder we'll have a file called validate form.js and we're just going to create a function called validate form it's going to take a request a response so this is a middleware and let's make um, let's export this from this file so module.exports equal validate form and we can literally just copy this over into here Oops. and then we're gonna want to import yup in this file like so right and then we want to make sure we copy over our schema into here and so now we can just call validate form and pass in a request and response like so and now it's going to do the exact same thing but just look how neat our code is so let's try send over this bad form okay i forgot to save the file so let's try sending over this bad form and as you can see it's giving us those same errors as last time except now our code is a lot cleaner so yeah um and then the next video we're gonna refactor this even more and we're gonna see how we can share this form schema that we're using on the back end with the front end because they're exactly the same thing so i'll see you then